It is Saturday, July 9th in the MLB, and this is Austin from Calling Our Shot. And I'm Logan from Calling Our Shot. And we are back with our three favorite plays of the day. But first, Logan, let's hop into a recap because, boy, oh, boy, bring out those brooms. A 5-0 and sweep, a 3-0 and plus the parlay cashing. What we call that, a COS perfect game. Waves, just the brooms are all out. Marlins not only cover the first five run line, win it outright. The nerfy, no sweat bet. Tim Anderson gets us his two bases. And then if you've tailed our parlay of the day on odds jam, White Sox cover the first five run line, then lose the game outright. And Royals come in clutch for the people. Hopefully we helped you guys make some money. And if we did, consider becoming a COS All-Star. Look, we love our All-Stars out there. You guys get a couple cool extra perks like waving the nerfy nation flag with the people. And we have a couple new ones today. We have AL Sports. We have Joshua Jones, Petey, Pablo, Alonzo, White, Travis Johnson, Joe Anderson, Jordan, Kablack. I hopefully I pronounced it right. And Danny Espinosa. Look, we want that list to be longer tomorrow. If you want to support us, it only costs $2.99 a month. We certainly would appreciate it. Hopefully we've been helping you guys make some money. Now, we do normally do a parlay of the day on Odds Jam, but those are only during weekdays. So there will be no parlay of the day on Odds Jam. We won't probably do a parlay today. Weekend baseball is hard enough. It's hard, even harder to hit a bit, uh, parlay. But look, we'll be back with those on uh, Monday morning. If you want to uh, support the channel, we really would appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Uh, Logan, I don't really have any more of an intro for the people today. What do you got for uh, your play's sake? Maybe you can take a victory lap for your fish. Yeah, dude, I love I loved how the Marlins clutched up for us one time. I got a ton of hate on that one. No surprise, right? When you fade the public, you get a lot of hate. But today, I'm sort of on the public side, right? We're, we're picking a money line with honestly my two favorite teams in baseball, right? We're going to the Cardinals versus Phillies game. And I'm riding the Redbirds money line. So the Cardinals money line minus 110 odds on Barstool. This is a this is a pick 'em. As you can see on on the on Barstool, it's pretty much a pick 'em. A lot of the books, pretty standard lines. M- maybe we see this change throughout the day, but I, I highly doubt it. I think think it's going to settle right about a pick 'em. Right? St. Louis lost two to nothing yesterday. <laughs> they lost via two Alec Bohm home runs, which is pretty fluky in itself. Wayne Wright. Classic Wainwright performance. He went nine innings pitched. I mean, that's that's super impressive. The bullpen should be fresh today, right? The good news for St. Louis is, is you know, a, after even after a loss, their bullpen didn't have to throw a single pitch. So you do like to see that. Now, who are the who are the Cardinals facing today? They're facing Kyle Gibson. Kyle Gibson, four innings pitched, six earned runs versus St. Louis a week ago. I don't know if you guys remember, but he hosted a home run derby. Boom, boom, boom. Just back to back to back uh, home runs. It was it was incredible to see. Yes, Kyle Gibson was that guy. He's a he's an absolute meatball hurler. Uh, so I hope I hope St. Louis can hit him today. Gibson, 6.34 road ERA and a 1.65 road whip. That that whip, you know, for anybody new to baseball, whip stands for walks and hits per inning pitched. So it's a ratio. You want that number to be as low as possible. You, ideally, you want it to be under one, but having it hover near two. Is a pretty high whip, shows lack of control, shows that he's putting easy base runners on. And I'm telling you, the St. Louis offense will capitalize on that. They got shut out yesterday. Today's a bounce back for them today. Seventh best in batting average at home, 12th in OPS at home. These Cardinals hitters bat so well at home, I just know that they should be able to get up runs on Gibson. If they don't, it's going to be fluky. Goldschmidt. Batting 399 at home. That's my NL MVP. If you watch our podcast, you know, right? Arenado batting 294 at home. Juan Yepes even 270 at home. Juan Yepes is somebody I want to talk about because he's important. Usually there, there's runners on base for him to drive home. Juan Yepes has to has to step up a lot of moments, and at home he does he does so. So I think I think we should be good for the Cardinals offensively. Now who's pitching for the Cardinals today? Not my favorite pitcher to back, but. It's Dakota, it's Dakota Hudson, six, three, and five earned runs in each of his last three starts. Yeah, I mean he's got he's had some bad outings in there, not gonna lie. But at home, he has been more solid. 3.03 home ERA and a 1.24 whip at home. So his numbers have gone down at home. He he's a he's a better pitcher, no surprise uh there. He just needs to limit the walks, right? Don't give these fi- Phillies hitters free base runners. That's what I'm asking Hudson today. Show a little bit of control. We should be decent. Philadelphia, 11th in batting average on the road, 5th in OPS on the home. So they're pretty uh decent offense. 22nd in hits on the road. That's important though, right? If if they're not going to if Dakota Hudson isn't putting on free base runners, Phillies might struggle a little bit today. Philadelphia hitters versus Dakota Hudson. I pulled some of their splits. Reese Hoskins, two for six, two walks. Schwarber, two for eight, three walks. Castellanos, one for 10 and a walk. Look, if you want to walk Hoskins and Schwarber, I'm okay with that. You you gotta make you gotta make those those uh bottom half of the hitters do the damage against you, right? You have to make the Stott, the Hall, the Odubel Herreras of the world. You have to make them beat you offensively. It's kind of the the, the blueprint for the Cardinals to win this game, in my opinion. I think you know if, if if I lose to some garbage Hall home runs or, or whatever, 
tip of the cap. I'm fine with that. Or even Hoskins, uh, you know, if, if Hoskins uh, is is on base, that that's a little bit of a trouble. So please just don't don't give free base runners to Dakota Hudson. We should be decent. Now in the battle of the bullpens, that's the last thing I want to talk about. St. Louis ninth in bullpen ERA. Philadelphia Phillies 15th in bullpen ERA. Phillies used to be way back of the pack. They've really turned it around this year. But could they do it? Be do a stinker? Absolutely. St. Louis bullpen is will be fresh today, and I do like their chances in a, in a pick them at home. The Redbirds is who I'm riding with today. But Austin, what do you got for your player prop today? You got a really nice shirt on. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you noticed my shirt. I really put a lot of time into this pick. Um, but actually, we're going to a guy by the name of Aaron Judge. All rise is on the shirt. We're taking his over one and a half bases. Now, you know, I haven't been touching a lot of base props because we haven't had great vibes. But I like that Tim Anderson gave us the winner yesterday. So we're going for back-to-back winners. Now, we look at uh, different sports books. We do see minus 125 on FanDuel. Normally, I will not take a base prop on FanDuel just because if – Aaron Judge, for whatever reason, gets benched today and then pinch hits. They'll still grade it as a win or loss. I don't see Aaron Judge taking a day off. If you want to go to a different book, you can lay a little bit more juice. But Judge just got a day off two days ago. I don't see him getting another one right here. Now, why do we like Judge? Well, actually, he did get a day off yesterday. Well, figuratively, because he was 0 for 5 with the walk. The man did absolutely nothing yesterday. You saw the Yankees. And, and you know, you look at it. It wasn't really his fault. He was odds boosted. If you took the Yankees to win and LeMahieu and Judge both get a hit, you probably thought if you weren't watching the score, you're like, all right, we won. The Yankees scored 11 runs. Judge and LeMay, you had to have gotten a hit. No chance. No, Judge went 0 for 5 and had a walk. But, look, I find it very unlikely that Judge has back-to-back bad games. I mean, these are guys that normally I'm targeting in those, you know, they have one bad game. They normally bounce back the next day. I don't see him going 0 for 4 or 0 for 5 again today. Now, the Yankees still on the road in Fenway. So we know Judge is going to bat probably in that number two spot, and that means we're likely going to see at least four plate appearances if the Yankees' bats are hitting well five or maybe six. And you look at the Red Sox who they're starting. They're starting Cutter Crawford. Look, I love the name, but he's a right-handed pitcher and he hasn't necessarily been the best this year. In fact, versus right-handed batters, he's allowing a 280 batting average compared to just 200 versus lefties. And you look at Judge, he loves seeing righties. I've said he struggles against lefties, but against righties, which is what he will see today, batting 301 on the year. And you compare that to 239 versus lefties. We look at the pitches Cutter Crawford's going to throw. 44.4% 44.4% will be a four-seam fastball. And I'm glad he actually throws a cutter. 28.1% is his name. I mean, he'd have to throw a cutter if that's your name. So those are the two pitches Judge is going to see. And if you look at Judge's expected batting average versus those pitches, batting 363 expected batting average versus four-seam fastballs and 331 versus the cutter. So two great pitches that Judge is really seeing well. Judge has two plus bases in four of his last six games at Fenway Park. So I'm willing to lay this juice minus 125. I just don't see him having back-to-back bad games. Maybe he hits a dinger, which is only like plus 220 on FanDuel. Him to get two plus hits is only plus, I think, 160 or plus 180 on FanDuel as well. So I really do think Judge bounces back today. We're taking his over two plus bases or one and a half bases, however you want to name it. But today, we're all rising, baby. We're counting on Mr. Judge. But, Logan, you know what time it is. It's Nerfy Nation time. People grab those flags, wave them. If you're not a COS All-Star, go become one. Hit that join button on the channel. Today, we had a pretty good one. I do like this one. Yesterday, we had a we had a solid one. Today, we're going back. We've hit four in a row. Let's go for five straight. We're going to the Blue Jays, Mariners. No one first inning, minus 128 on FanDuel Sportsbook. Why why DraftKings is minus 180? Like, I, don't, I don't know what to do with that one. I mean, that's just comical when you look at the differences between books here. But we look at this one, and we got a revenge game narrative. We have Robbie Ray on the mound for the Mariners going up against his old squad, the Blue Jays. And while Robbie Ray hasn't necessarily been his old self that he was last year, Cy Young winner, still 14-3 and three on nerfies. I mean, the guy's been a Nerfy Nation ally. And you look at the Blue Jays, they're normally home runner bust. I mean, Robbie Ray's going to throw it fast. But Toronto's still only 16th and first inning runs. It's a team that's very good offensively, but we've seen them go time and time again. We go Bo Bichette, well, we go Springer, Bo Bichette, Vladdy. One, two, three inning. It happens way too many times. And so I think Robbie Ray can give me those first three outs. What about the next guy, Logan? Yeah, Alec Manoa, right? So it's Battle of the Aces for each team. Alec Manoa, 14 and two on Nerfies this year. He's been really good. Now, in his last start, he let probably the world down because I know the world was on him against the A's. Well, he he had a first inning meltdown versus the A's. So he did Yerfi in his last start. He's do a bounce back, no run first inning uh, game today for, for sure. Seattle tied for 12th and first inning runs. They are a decent first inning run team at home. We can't deny that, but I, I still look at the, the Mariners lineup and I, I mean, there are a lot of below average hitters. So I, I, I think Manoa should be able to app to navigate his, his way through the order as long as he's not doing some garbage walks or anything. The over under set to seven and a half, right? They're, they're not expecting it, it's seven on, on some books, seven and a half on others. They're not expecting a ton of runs. So I really do like this one, Austin, as a nerfy. It's honestly my favorite on the slate. If we want to talk about, you know, maybe another lean that we had that we looked at for a second, 
we looked at Pirates versus versus Brewers, no run first inning. I think that's a solid look for like the games that aren't at 10, 10 p.m. Eastern time. I think that's a that's a good look. I think Woodruff and Thompson and that one should be able to get the nerfy. Uh, but I hate picking Pirates game nerfies. It's just scar tissue from last year. So you got to uh, understand that. But Austin, we're going to fly the flags today. And if you think this flag's cool, you should become a COS All-Star. You get it in digital form. You get to go down in the chat and you get to – just fly it whenever you want. I mean, it's it's one of the best perks, honestly, Austin. <laughs> I agree. So we're going to try to hit five straight. We've hit nine of our last 11 nerfies. You saw the record at the beginning of the year. Very profitable bet so far this year. Hopefully we can continue those good vibes for Nerfy Nation. We appreciate you guys as always for tuning in. No parlay of the day today, but those are our three picks. Can we go for back-to-back -back sweeps? Who says no? We've swept two of our last three days, so let's make that three of four. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. Enjoy your Saturday. Enjoy your weekend. We'll be back again same time Sunday morning. We'll see you guys then. Peace out.